We've seen a lot of examples on trigonometric substitution. I just want to highlight some interesting examples that come up. In this section, I'm not going to complete the integration because a lot of them come out as similar integrals as we had in the previous two videos. So I'm not going to repeat what I've already explained in the previous videos, but I just want to show you what the integrals look like so that you can identify what we've got. In this case, we've got the integral of e to the power t times the root of 9 minus e to the power 2t. Now, at first glance, this does not look like any of the formats of the trig substitution. But what, firstly, I need you to notice that e to the power 2t is just e to the power t squared. So we've got a square in there. So if we make a straightforward substitution, let u equal to e to the power t. du is then e to the power t dt. And I've got an e to the power t dt there. So this will become the integral of the root of 9 minus u squared du. And all of a sudden, it looks exactly like the trig integrals we've seen before. So then we're going to say, let this u, now it's not x, it's u, let u then be equal to 3 sine theta, where theta comes between minus power over 2 and power over 2. And then that will be du is then 3 cos theta d theta, and we can do our trig substitution. So I'll end up with the root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta times 3 cos theta d theta. Now we've seen examples exactly like this one in the previous videos, so I'm not going to carry on with this one. You can look at there for the technique. I just wanted you to notice that it doesn't always look like a trig substitution, but with a little bit of manipulation, it quickly gets there. All right, so you can complete this one in your own time. The next one, this really doesn't look like a trig substitution. We've got a fraction. My denominator, I've got something I can't factorize. What you need to notice here is x squared plus 6x plus 25. If I complete the square, that's the same as x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 25. If I group these terms together, and this is a technique called completing the square, which you've hopefully encountered before, that is x plus 3 squared plus 16. So we're going to write this integral as 1 over x plus 3 squared plus 16 dx. So this is very, very similar to the tan substitution. So I'm going to say let whatever's being squared, x plus 3, be equal to 4 tan theta. And then theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. dx will then be 4, 6 squared theta, d theta. And when we make our substitution, we'll get 4, 6 squared theta, d theta, my denominator, will then be 16, tan squared theta, plus 16. And yet again, this one's even simpler than ones we've seen before. We take 16 out, 4 is at the top, so I've got 1 over 4. I've got a sex square in the numerator and a sex square in the denominator, so it's just 1. So that one is a quarter theta plus c, if we integrate it. So theta, then we know, is arctan or tan inverse, whichever you prefer, of x plus 3 over 4. So here's an example that did not look remotely like a trig substitution, but with a little bit of manipulation, we got it to look like a trig substitution very quickly. All right, now the next one comes with a word of warning. 1 over the root of 3 minus 4x squared. This looks like it could very easily be a trig substitution. We can rewrite that as the root of 1 over. We can take 4 out. And we've got the square root of 4 times 3 over 4 minus x squared dx. And then we know we can, the numbers are a bit ugly, but we can say let x be equal to root 3 over 2 sine theta. 
and you can make that substitution and see it'll work. All right, it'll be a bit of work, but what I want you to notice, if you think back of the inverse trig functions, this is very standard close to the arc sine function. So there's actually a simpler way to do this. If we look at this integral of 1 over the root of 3 minus 4x squared, and I didn't complete the one up there, you can do the substitution and complete it, but I will show you the quicker way. Don't forget about your inverse tri trig functions. That one you can rewrite as the integral of 1 over, we can take the 3 out and have 1 minus 4 over 3x squared dx, which is the integral, so I've got 1 over root 3, so I've got 1 over root 3, 1 over 1 minus, and that is just 2 over root 3 square x squared it's root dx. So if you say let u be equal to 2 over root 3x, du is then 2 over root 3x dx. And then this is going to jump out to be an inverse trig substitution. So we've got 1 over root 3 times the root 3 over 2 from the du, integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus u squared du. And that is just arc sine. So yet again, I'm not going to finish it, but just take note, a trig substitution would have you also gotten you to arc sine. These two will be the exact same answer. You can test this, but just take note, we don't always have to do a trig substitution if it's in this format. Firstly, look out, is this a plain inverse trig function or is it something else that I can recognize? And we're going to look at another word of warning shortly. But let's look at one more with sec, because sec was an ugly one because we had to look at the two cases. Here we've got the root of 16 plus x squared minus 1 over x between a quarter and a half. All right. Now I'm going to take this root 16 out as a common factor, and I'll get 4 times the root of x squared minus 1 over 16 over x. We want to do that because now it looks like a standard format. So I'm going to say... Let x be our a values then 1 over 4, 1 over 4 sec theta. dx, and we'll look at the interval of theta shortly, dx is then a quarter sec theta tan theta, d theta. Now, we are told where x is coming from. x is between a quarter and a half. So that means that theta is between naught and pi over 2, but let's see why. If x is equal to a quarter, then I've got sec x is equal, sec theta is then equal to 1, so theta must be 0. If x is equal to a half, it means sec theta must be equal to 2, so theta is pi over 3. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 3, so I know theta is in the interval from 0 to pi over 2. So we're only considering the one case with sec because it's a definite integral. So that helps a bit. So now we do our substitution. So that's the integral from 0 to pi over 3. I've got the 4 that's tagging around, and I've got a quarter. So I've got a 4, this 4, and then the quarter from the du. Then I've got the root of 1 over 16, sec squared theta minus 1 over 16, divided by x, which is a quarter, sec of theta, times d theta, I've already written the quarter down, I just have sec theta tan theta, d theta left. All right, so let's clean this up. This is a bit of a mess. 0 to power of a 3. I've got a 4 times a quarter, which is 1 divided by a quarter, so that gets me to 4. Then, out of the root, I get the root of 1 over, 1 over 16, which gives me a quarter. So there we go. The numerator is 6 squared minus 1, which would be tan of theta, because we know theta is positive. So I'm going to get tan theta there. Tan squared theta's root is tan theta. Divide by 6 theta 
times sec theta times tan theta. So that is tan squared theta d theta. All right. That was quite complicated. So let's just get that to the next page so we can tidy this up. So that gives us the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of We've got tan squared theta, but tan squared theta, I know, is sec squared theta minus 1. Why don't I directly integrate tan squared theta? Because we don't have a shortcut for tan squared theta. It's not one of the standard integrals, but we've got sec squared theta. So we use the identity to rewrite it like that. So that gives me tan theta minus theta between pi over 3 and 0. And that is tan of pi over 3 minus pi over 3 minus 10 of 0 plus 0. And that just gives me 10 of pi over 3 is root 3 minus pi over 3. And there we go. Definite integral with sec again, but because it was a definite integral, we didn't have to look at the two cases. Now the last example I want to show you comes with a big word of warning. This again looks like a standard trig substitution. And doing a trig substitution, if you say let x be equal to 2 sine theta, you will get to the answer, but it will take you a long time. When doing integration, first and foremost say, what's the simplest way to integrate? A straightforward substitution. If it's not a, one of the standard integrals, can a straightforward substitution work? And yes, because the derivative of this function is present in one form or another. So we're going to say, let u be equal to 4 minus x squared, du is then minus 2x dx. We've got a x dx there, that's minus a half du. So this whole integral simplifies to minus a half times the integral of 1 over the square root of u du. And you can see in our substitution videos how to deal with this one, that's pretty straightforward. But it just comes with a word of warning, a trig substitution will work but it will just take you four times as long. So pay attention and see if there's a straightforward substitution that will get you there. Else, if you do a trick substitution, you will still get to the same answer. You can test that, because that can test your skills in trick substitution, but make sure to look out for a standard substitution before you do a trick substitution.